Whilst Jojo Siwa is currently in her Ric Flair, Jake Paul-esque era, the allegations against her and her mum Jessalyn have not gone away. But in case you haven't watched my last video or you have no idea what kind of allegations would even be put forward against the mother-daughter duo, Leah Sanderson, an ex XOMG pop member alongside her mum Angie, have accused Jojo and Jessalyn of pitting young girls against each other pretty much forcing them to be competitive with one another, putting Leah and other girls through grueling rehearsal schedules, throwing insults at Leah and other girls, and one of the more serious ones, Jessalyn even ordering Leah to put a maxi pad over her bleeding belly button during a rehearsal. But now we have a live stream in which Leah and her mum Angie are spilling some certain things that I have saved my raw reaction for. That's right, I haven't watched any of this. That's a bit of a lie, isn't it, Caitlin? I literally heard the first word and then I was like, ah, oh, shush, shush. So I guess here goes nothing. Same time. Dallas, you can say. Okay, morning. Dallas. And so we were doing our sound check and we were getting absolutely screamed at and mind you, there's like how many people watching and we come off of the stage. She keeps stopping the music, stopping the music, stopping the music. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm literally about to go off the stage and throw up. And then like, no, she did. She I had to run. To, I had to run to the up. bathroom, and it was so bad. And yes, I will get to that, guys, in a second about the headsets. But we get off stage, and she she goes, you say this part because I don't want to say um what imply a bad word, so you say it. I don't know what you. When we got off stage, what Jess said to us. I don't remember. I, yes, I, you do. About you guys. I don't know about you guys, but so far, this feels really uncomfortable. Like, I feel like none of us should be seeing this, if that makes sense. Like, this is a kid who has gone through some trauma, okay? There is no doubt about it. The allegations that have come forward against Jojo and Jessalyn are some that I would have no doubt about in believing to some degree, especially because Jessalyn is a stage mom. That is why Jojo is in the position that she's in today and Jojo was raised in such a toxic disgusting industry that no child should ever be subject to. I don't care what anyone says that is my stance on it. And so we have a situation of another stage mom subjecting her daughter to the same kinds of things and it just worries me because with the kind of caliber of allegations that Leah's mom has put forward against Jojo and against Jessalyn it puts Leah Leah in a very dangerous position. Leah has spinal bifida. She already has enough on her plate to deal with every single day. And it's really been making some people wonder, you know, if it was really this bad, why did you subject your daughter to all of this shit? But I digress. She said you guys effing suck? Yeah. Yeah, she said they effing sucked. And then they- She said you guys better have, you guys owe me $500,000. No, 200,000. Oh. No. $200,000. $200,000, something along those lines. I mean, this is pretty important information to remember, is it not? And just by the way, not talking about Leah in a negative fashion whatsoever because she is the f child in this situation. And I hate to see that Leah is being put in a position online where she's kind of being re-victimized again because it's like, well, it just seems like you and your mom are just out for clout and money. I mean, nobody is really going to know that. And these allegations are truly just abhorrent as it stands. And this is just a personal opinion of mine. And I mean, if that really were the case that they wanted clout and they wanted money and all this kind of stuff, they would still be working with Jojo and Jessalyn to this day because it would benefit them in that way. Because she thought that we didn't do good in our um, rehearsal. rehearsal and so she was degrading us saying um, you owe me this money for this performance and like obviously we, we didn't but like <laughs> and I'm sorry I keep 
pausing, but like, I'm not sure if they're talking about Jessalyn or Jojo, but it kind of is sounding like Jessalyn. If I'm wrong, I mean, we'll just pause again, but. And then, you know, the, the little girl that we mentioned earlier that was having issues with breathing, she'd been to the doctor, she'd had breathing treatments. Um, she was really struggling to breathe. The Minnesota air is hard, I guess, if you have like lung issues, it was so uh -huh. cold. And she'd been to the doctor already and they were threatening to kick her out of the performance. She was screaming and crying into her mic. It was, people it were was all so around. bad. There were so many people screaming, could, crying, and they're just like, we're not going to do it with her. But there is another side to that, I guess. If a child is struggling to breathe while dancing, don't you think the parents should have taken their child aside and been like, I am not going to be subjecting my child to something just for Instagram, TikTok followers alike. Like, I understand that this is an amazing opportunity for anyone to get. You get pretty mediocre money, you get exposure, but most of all, you're getting opportunities. You're networking in Hollywood, right? But the problem is, is once you're putting your child's health at risk, risk, you do have some responsibility to make sure that you're the parent in this situation and you take them out of the equation. Because I just want to reiterate, while I completely acknowledge how great these opportunities are, health is a lot more important. If you can't breathe, then you can't dance. Then you can't get up out of bed, bro. Like, really? And it just sucks even more that there was really no adult in charge here. And we were like, uh, mind you, all of us. The I'm, moms are like, please, Jess, please talk to Jojo, because Jojo was the one not wanting to do Jojo it. was the one that was trying to just kick her out of the whole group. And we were like, Jess, please, please, you know, just please talk to her. Because the moms, we didn't want to lose another girl. We and, and here's the thing, right? It's like, I'm such a, I give the benefit of a doubt kind of person, right? Where I'm listening to this situation and I'm thinking, was Jojo wanting to kick the child out of the group who found it hard to breathe? Because it's a liability and it's also really f irresponsible and unprofessional to keep a child on set that is having really bad health issues. And I think that kicking them out, like, get the f off stage. I don't want this non-breathing kid in my face. That's disgusting. That is disgusting. But I think context matters in situations like this, because if I was in a hypothetical situation where I was in Jojo's shoes and I was working with children with health issues, especially as bad as not being able to breathe and struggling to breathe, I would encourage this child and their parent to just go home. Look, your child is finding it really hard to breathe. And I think the most responsible thing in this case is to take them to a medical professional and have them rest. But you just don't know if Jojo or Jesslyn came to them with that kind of cadence or if it was really mean. We cared no, about her and we not. knew she was struggling and... You know, I thought, oh gosh, well, Leah's next because she's over there puking, but she's trying her hardest. You know, all the dads were there. The dads were flipping out because they'd never seen their girls be treated like that before. And we're telling them to shut um, up. They cannot do that because we have no NDA, so we can say whatever we want. Yeah. Um, and all of this is true. Like It's all, there's receipts. Um, yeah, so all of this is true. And so that was the most grueling experience ever. And... Uh, what would always happen is Jess would go, you you moms, you better go yell at your kid and tell them what they're yeah. doing wrong. And my mom, like, obviously, my mom is tough on me. Like, if I'm not doing what I need to do, she will tell me. She's straight up with me. But also, she's supportive and knows what's right for me and what's not. And so... <sighs> Jessalyn is a stage mom through and through. I am not surprised that she was encouraging parents to scream at their kids to get in line and do better and do this and do that right now. Like it just doesn't surprise me that she's that way. That is what stage moms are like. Really just insane people, dude. A lot of the times whenever she would tell us, she would say, go to your moms and y'all need to yell at your kids and tell them what they're doing right. And y'all better get this all together, whatever. And and she'd be like, just keep your head up. It's okay. Because <laughs> I would try to look like I was getting on to her. I mean, if she needed gotten on to, if she wasn't trying hard, then I would. But like, 
you know, 85, 89% of the time, she was doing the best she possibly could. And so I just act like I was getting onto her, but I was just like, you got this, just keep going, it's okay. You and, know. And at Mall of America, I know some of our dads were there too. And like, I think that was starting a breaking point because it was, our dads were like, what? And so they were telling, um, us to go we had a long conversation with our parents and like saying to yell at us and tell us what we were doing wrong and then we kept doing the dance and literally mind you after we did this we had to run it probably girl i'm not even being dramatic probably close to 20 times because that was what i was she kept stopping it and kept going on and then we would do the whole thing and then we'd have to go do the whole thing again we're sweating in these big costumes this is why i say that there needs to be a certain kind of team on set of these rehearsals or these kind of shows because children do get taken advantage of and i'm not just talking about you know as surely i'm talking about emotional mentally physically and given the fact that Leah has spinal bifida it makes it obviously a lot harder for her to perform at 100% constantly and with these sort of cutthroat industries it again doesn't surprise me that you have people in these productions who are pieces of shit I don't doubt that for a second but I feel like it's almost another unpopular opinion to be putting responsibility onto the a parent as well because if you see your child being screamed at like this and you don't like it like ah uh... I don't even know what to say there because I don't know what I'd do in that situation. There is only so many things that we can say that we would do in that situation up against these pretty powerful people. And that's where, you know, the whole power imbalances kind of shtick lies and can get a bit difficult to deal with in person. It just saddens me that this kid is at the forefront of such terrible things, dude, that Leah and no child should ever have to go through. There's like 300, 200 people watching us. She's yelling at us, screaming at us. And then at the same You're time... You're puking. I'm puking. Dallas can't, can't breathe. breathe. I, um... <laughs> it's, it's late at night. It's, it's late like at night. And then... 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I couldn't even walk after we finished. My dad had to carry me to the room because that's how bad, like, I was feeling. And so the next day, we were very, very nerve, like it was very nerve wracking. And not only did the parents, but the adults in charge of this production, <clears throat> Jess and Jojo, of course, aren't being practical and aren't taking care of these children. It's just so sad, dude. You have a kid who can't breathe on stage and then another kid who is just throwing up everywhere. Like, does that not ring alarm bells? Is that not like, wee wee wheel like something's wrong we were all so nervous like one girl actually puked backstage like right before we went on uh -huh. and uh, the nerves were high the nerves were so bad because we didn't know what we didn't know how this was gonna go because of the night before and we knew that we were giving it our absolute all and so but it wasn't good enough for no me. and so we go on stage and we have these little in ears i've talked about it before and we hear a voice in the middle of our performance saying, you guys, the energy is low. Y'all are sucking. Come on, guys. What are y'all doing? Like all of these things. It just sounds like a Dance Mom sequel, if I'm being honest. I'll say what I said in my last video. Leah's mom would have had to have known what the atmosphere was like surrounding the dance industry, specifically with Dance Moms and people who worked closely with Abby Lee Miller. Jojo Siwa was screamed at, mocked, insulted, by that woman on a daily basis for millions around the world to see and it doesn't cross your mind at least once like hey my daughter is a huge fan of this show she's a huge fan of Jojo Siwa damn this isn't kind of like lining up together because what I'll say about Jojo Siwa at least from what I have observed over her career is that the industry has done some pretty terrible things to that girl and it saddens me because she's continuing this cycle of just toxic industry standards like you don't need to verbally abuse 
people to get them to do things. And it's just not okay that this cycle is being perpetuated onto innocent kids that, you know, they just thought they were going to get a really cool opportunity. And it turned out to be that it was just a literal screaming fest, insults and people who didn't really give a damn about their well-being, mental health on set. And that's not okay. These are things that do deserve to be called out. But on the opposite side of the coin too, parents have a responsibility to take their kids out of these kind of harmful situations. Like your kid is throwing the f up. Your kid can't f breathe. Take them out out of there. Take him off stage. It's a wrap. It's done. All of this is just so infuriating. Oh, she's like, it's sloppy. And we're trying to sing to like how many thousands of people that are at the Mall of America it's trying cool. to be a big performance. There's people up there. There's people down there, over there, over there. We're trying to cater to everybody. We're trying to sing live and dance full out. And then we hear this voice in our heads. Like, how does that affect a person? Like, <laughs> when you're literally performing for thousands of people. And so, that that was so bad. And then after we got off stage, um, our moms are like, y'all did so good, y'all did so good. Like, it was really good. And then Jess asked, text JoJo and asked her, how was it? And you wanna know what she said? Sloppy. She said it was sloppy. No good, like, it was sloppy. And we were all so proud of them. It was a huge performance. Even Jess, even Jess was proud of was them. proud of us. Even Jesselyn was proud. Okay, if even Jesselyn was proud, and that's saying a lot because she's never happy about anything. Okay, we've seen it before. Jojo must have been on one or smoking something because that alone just doesn't make sense. Like you're saying that to children, dude. But just looking at it from a psychological standpoint, now obviously I don't have any credentials in the psychological field or whatever. Oh my God, that sounded dumb as but this is my personal opinion and mine alone, all right? But I feel like saying this kind of stuff to kids doesn't affect Jojo or doesn't really cross her mind that, you know, saying that to kids is a bad thing, especially when they've done an exceptional, amazing job. She has probably had that happen to her a million times over. Now, is that an excuse for her saying, no, nope, it was sloppy? Actually, all of you, but not that she said that. No, of course not. There is no excuse for that. Once again, it doesn't surprise me that Jojo Siwa is so extreme about this stuff because she's been brought up in an industry that has basically just picked her apart and tore her to shreds. Meanwhile, she's had to upkeep this image because she's got to sell the bows. She's got to win these dance performances. She's got to pay the bills somehow. And I feel really bad for Leah and the other girls too who were made to feel as though they aren't enough, that they weren't enough in that moment, even though they were being screamed at through an earpiece. I'm sorry, but I'm up a performance every single time if I hear somebody screaming at me because I'm like, oh, um, <laughs> actually, I thought I was doing pretty good. I'm just gonna go cry into my pillow tonight. Yeah. And Jojo goes, no, it was sloppy. Mm. And... To think like, yes, of course, there was probably things we could have done better. I know there's absolutely things yeah. that I could have done better. It was our we first were time. You were children. We still are. I'm still children. Yeah. <laughs> but this was our first time singing six or seven songs, dancing full out, singing live in front of all of these people. It was so your first really huge. Huge concert. That had more than one song. Yeah, exactly. Like, you performed to more people than that, but it was just one song. Like, on JoJo's tour, there were thousands of people, but it was one song. Um, the Children Family Emmys, it was one song. You know, exactly. it, the everywhere, this was the first time that y'all had performed six songs. Uh, you'd never even performed two songs back to back. Yeah, no. Know? And so... Uh, that's not true. There was some kids con. Y'all did a couple of songs. Oh, yeah, but like... Kids con, y'all did more than one song, yeah. <laughs> But, so yeah, that's basically what happened, and uh, it was sloppy, guys. Sloppy. <sighs>
Like, yes, there's things we could have done better, but- And so that seems to be the end of that clip. Honestly, my takeaway from this is that it's just overall a sad situation for all of the kids that are involved. Unfortunately, when you're looking to make it in the Hollywood industry, there are so many sacrifices that you have to make, such as what Leah's mum did, sold her livelihood, her business, bro. They slept on air mattresses on the floors of studios for several months. Like there's so much that you have to give up in order to be even in a position of Jojo Siwa's. And it just breaks my heart that these kids have had to go through everything that they've had to go through. Nobody needs the dance mom's environment in order to succeed in dancing. And it's why it's very important that this is all being spoken up about because the industry is disgusting. It's toxic, but it's especially disgusting towards children because there's no one really there to advocate for them. Not really their parents in a sense because their parents are sacrificing an amount of dignity that they can't really ever get back. And to some degree, I do think that they are aware while they're watching their children throw up on stage, while they're watching their children struggle to be able to breathe because they see it as I could be possibly taking away once in a lifetime opportunity from my child who could be in a position like Jojo Siwa's. I am not a crotch demon haver, but what I will say is that I would want the best for my own. Anyone would want nothing less but the best for their kids. Most parents would love to see the level of success for their children that Jojo Siwa has. And so that's why it's like, you know, when I do criticize Angie, I can also understand too how she may have been feeling at that point of time. Like, you know, she, she sold her business. She sold her livelihood. She sold something that she worked many years towards building. And that is a serious thing to do, to sell that to move across country and to sleep on the floor of strangers' studios. It's just, it, it irks me. All of this irks me. But I guess this is just a reality for so many children in the industry. And overall, I am glad that this has been brought to light, really, because it is an eye-opener for people who weren't aware in the first place as to what really happens to these kids, especially in the dance industry. It's cutthroat. It's disgusting. It's it's competitive. And Jessalyn, alongside Jojo, have made themselves examples. They've continued this toxic cycle that they were once subject to. And I don't, I don't understand why they're doing it, but I guess we will just have to find out in the coming days, weeks, months, whenever they formally respond to this, which I honestly don't think they will. But then again, we just don't know. So with all of that being said, everybody, tell me your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I would absolutely love to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much for your stay at Yappersville today, everybody. I really appreciated your time and your energy getting through this whole thing. Take care of yourselves and most of all, love your fucking selves.